Take a Bible if you would, and uh, you can join me in the book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4. And uh, we're going to read this kind of thing, so we're going to have to say it later on. Uh, Philippians 4. And we're in a series talking about, I uh, don't know if it's going to work very well. And, uh, you know, don't ever ask the pastor to do a music guy. Yeah, we're still going to do a music guy. Well, we're going to do a music guy. There's a reason this thing is never by this, and then hopefully, you know, obviously, you know, the music's going to be the fourth, because I'm completely unqualified and didn't go for that. But uh, we're in a series talking about uh, some just really simple key verses that are foundational for our life. Uh, the thing that we're calling is plum. Anybody who's ever worked on an old house knows that no home after about 50 years is square and well worked on. Things move, they move, they shift it around. And uh, it is frustrating to be difficult. I mean, if you remodel in your bathroom and you want to tie in your bathroom, they have this wonderful stuff out now for the other way that you can buy. Yeah, uh, and uh, that door works a little so you can go see it and go just lay it all out there for you. But you know, you can level your floor and it, it makes it nice and smooth so you can put the pile down and look back and all of that. We know what it's like to fix an old home and work on things that are not square and fun. My goal is to help them bring them back and they stay put and make it work. Well, in a similar way, for our lives, our lives can be that way. In fact, the Bible says we're all born in this world out of square. Well, in fact, we're born in this world crooked. We're born in this world as sinners by nature, by choice. We do things that are wrong. We don't want to do them. We wish we didn't. I haven't done it. We can run and turn the clock back if we want to do it again. And what God has done is that Jesus' son to not only save us and forgive us from those things by his death on the cross, but he has given us his spirit to help us to do the things that we need to do. And that's what I want 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 to do. He wants us to, to experience that new change in our life. He wants to kind of bring our lives into alignment. So what we've done for the summer is just pick several different verses and just key critical passages of Scripture in all of the Bible that we uh, as Christians are trying to follow the Christ so we live by So these are the kind of verses that you need to write down on a sticky note and put it on the fridge. And the ones that you need to put out next to the sink, you know, on the bed, and you're brushing your teeth and not having anything else to do, but you can read them and memorize and put them in your mind to stick in the car when you're driving away. I mean, you just put there that because they're the critical truths that you need every day of your life. Well, this morning we're looking at Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to talk about how God is the one that we should trust. That we should not be anxious and worrying about all the stuff that goes on in life, but instead, rather than you know, being unhelpful, we should spend our so spending our energy on worry, on fear and doubt and all of those things, we should stay on the other side and say, God, I trust you. You've got this. I trust you to hear me and to give thanksgiving to God. The Bible says that God is peace, the peace of God, which passes all of his family and all of our family. So I'm going to talk to you about that this morning. But first, why don't you join me in prayer with you? God, it's great to be together today and worship you. And that song is so spoke to my heart this morning. And now we're going to do it in I think it's where that came from. It's where we can help us when they say those words. And even though this world is totally falling apart, it's hard to lost its kids, it's going to be bankrupt, it's going to be bad and crazy. Church of Philippi in the city that's out of Philippi, and he says this, I entreat 
into the second and fourth. Incredible. Look at your socks. You think they stopped one? In fact, the man that was totally surprised at you. I watched the mom, 43 years old, but he's actually 42, the day before her birthday, won her third gold medal in the same event in the third Olympics, a third, a third kilometer, which is like 18 mile time trial by points. Her son's cheering her on, and she comes across the line, looks back, and she's like, Did I go home? Did I go home? And they're like, Yes, and she falls over and collapses, you know. And she's crying, and her son's like, Why are you crying? I'm being a woman. I don't know how a 43 year old mom wins in that mix, but she pulled off. It's incredible. Pretty, pretty racing. I love the Olympics. Any of those athletes that are playing with them will tell you how the battle is going to be. That's what it's there. They know. And if they believe they can't do it, they can't do it. But if they believe they can do it, they might just actually be able to pull it off. With that principle, the way that a man passes over, he wants to spiritualize his will. Right the same way, if you're talking about the fact that Paul, that's what Paul's talking about, all of this is talking in this passage about us getting on the line with him. So often when we are facing issues in life, so often when we're struggling or wrestling with stuff, the real issue is not what a person said, it's not what just happened, it's not what's going on, it's not what might happen or we're afraid of. Those aren't the real issues. Those things we have no control of. It's so funny, we obsess over the stuff that we can't control. And we ignore the stuff we can. The stuff that we can begin to deal with is the stuff in between a brain. And that's what Paul is getting straight this morning. He's like, let's get our mind right. So the first thing I want you to recognize is, is it conflict with less than your mind? The backdrop to verses 4 through 7, when, it, when Paul was saying, rejoice in the Lord always. The Lord is at hand. Don't be worried and anxious about anything, but instead pray. What's the backdrop behind that? It's conflict. It's conflict in the church. It's conflict in the middle of it. We know what happens when conflict takes. I don't care if it's a marriage relationship, it's a friendship. Some of you, your, your parents are getting older. And it's funny how we, as we get older in life, we look back to the kid, right? I hope I don't do that to my kids. I hope that somehow I can do this like that I'm not around uh, you know, this little kid that they're having to, to treat. You know, so here we kind of do that. We can just constantly come in and we're older for the kids as they're older and they're like, adults and they have to be getting and dealing with stuff here. And it's constantly comes all kinds of ways. It works all of them. And when constantly comes in our life, most of us, that really messes with our mind. The closer your relationship is to the person, the more you care about that person, the more that conflict messes with you. Notice what happens. So Paul Holt is writing to this church. There's conflict between these two ladies, and nobody else in the church is enjoying this conflict. How would you like to go to church while the other lady and sick people are going to be in church and wonder that they're looking at each other? You're probably sitting on opposite sides, right? You know, one's coming in one door, the other one's coming in the other door, and I'm like, we don't know what all is going on. Who's going to feel? Paul's like, put it together, ladies. Get your mind straight with God and get this help with some other people. But when that was hitting, Paul was talking to the church, it's a trouble. And so he's talking to them and saying, here's what you need to do. Rejoice in God. Rejoice. That's your redeemer is. Rejoice and all the incredible stuff of who God is, what he's done for Jesus Christ. And if you didn't hear it the first time, make sure you underline this, highlight it, mark it. He said it twice. If God says it once, it's enough. And if he says it twice, that goes to together. It means we're not paying attention to it. It's really important to vote. But how focused our mind is to rejoice in God. You see, the conflict is going on, it, it tends to rob our joy. If we don't get our mind right, what happened? Everything is fixated on that problem, and we begin to miss all the other good stuff that's going on. And when joy is not there, we aren't able to be reasonable in verse 5, as the Bible says. Such a reasonable to be you known to everyone. That, that word just does not translate into English, but not so much the reasonable, but the Greek word behind that English word. What Paul is saying is that, guys, let everybody know that you are patiently and trustingly enduring difficulty in life. Let everybody see that. Not so much like my friend, I think. I don't know if you're on eyes and happy face. How are you there? You need that. I mean, every day I'm not going to be able to do something more than I'm going to be able to do. 
saying is, is truthfully, when you are in conflict, and if it's robbing your joy, if it's your happiness has been found in some of the relationships, he says, you're not enduring the difficult things of life that robs that ability to move on. You begin to lose the next thing in verse 5. You begin to lose the sense that God is right there with you. You begin to feel isolated. Doesn't that happen? When there's conflict going on in your life or problems, maybe not even just conflict with a person, maybe conflict in a situation, we get that psychological role conflicted. Okay, how it is. We're just not happy with what's going on in our life with the things that are going on, you know, the joy is robbed, you're not enduring kind of a difficult time, and you begin to feel like God is nowhere around you. The Lord is not at hand. He's not literally at the beautiful place. Where is God in this? God's abandoning you. God's not answering our prayers. When you allow that stuff to, your mind is not square, you allow all of that to rob you, you begin to feel like you're a dwarf there, you're so isolated from God. And then we begin to worry about everything. In verse, five, in verse 6, he says, Don't be, stop being anxious. Or stop worrying about all of this stuff. You see, when we are in those situations of life, we have that conflict, we have those challenges, and those struggles, but it messes with our mind, and everything begins to grow and fall away. It's the whole thing. I mentioned this morning, we got a little sinkhole kind of going on in our back part. I'm not a, not a Florida sinkhole, but it's like there. So a couple of years ago, I've been told that we've been in a sinkhole. You see that? It's crazy. All these like hundreds of thousands of dollars in four beds, just literally overnight, it's opened up underneath the building where they're being stored. I mean, it's enough to make it a little bit of a You know, not that kind of sinkhole. This is a grand piece. You can go on the back of my car. Going out talking about all the water that's going off down on that front line is just moving away. You can see that it's a little bit of 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 a so constrained when you get worried about it. can't stop worrying because there's problems out there that feel helpless. That's what we're all talking about. It's like, okay, we're going to get your mind straight away. You don't have to worry. In fact, that worries out you. And you say, all of this begins to fall apart. And we aren't trusting God to take care of us. And our hearts and our minds are not God. They are not being protected. In fact, our minds are a part of the home of the world. All that's going on. And then, in verse 9, we aren't thinking about the things that are true and good. We're thinking about all the bad things. We're thinking about, especially when we're in conflict, we're going to get the character assassination on that person. We begin thinking all of the negative stuff. We begin thinking about all the awful scenarios. And all this, all this begins to creep and cloud in on us. And if we aren't catching it quickly, we fall away from that whole and then ultimately, God is not really good at something God is removed from us. But the blessing of God is not our life. And it's not because we have to it. It's because we have to our eyes on the beach. We trust in something else. All of it in our work is elsewhere. And God prepared it for us in that state. Because 
doing all of this and you can it on them. And they're like, yeah, it's all their fault. And if you're justified, and our thoughts and our attitudes, and I knew it was really all of it when it came to it. And we exonerate ourselves and we put them on our mind. And there's no solution to that thing to do. Whatever, I don't know 
yourself and say, oh, David and Steele, congratulations. David, you came to Rio with a gold and bronze from London and a whole lot of pressure. What does it mean to come out and medal here in the Synchro event? Yeah, I, I just think the past week, there's just been an enormous amount of pressure, and I've felt it. And, um, you know, it's just an identity crisis. When my mind is on this and thinking I'm defined by this, then my mind goes crazy. But we do have to know that our identity is in Christ. And we're just we're thankful for this opportunity to be able to dive in front of Brazil and for the United States. And uh, it's been an absolutely thrilling moment for us. You now have gold, silver, and bronze Olympic medals. How much does this free you up for the individual event? It does. It takes a lot of pressure off of me, but um, this this never could have happened without Steele, without him pushing me, without him loving me well, uh, encouraging me, and my wife has just been a solid rock, and uh, I, I couldn't have done it without them. Well, and Steele, for you, your first ever Olympics, first ever Olympic event, how were you able to maintain your composure so well? I think the way David just described it was flawless. The, the fact that I was going into this event knowing that my identity is rooted in Christ and not what the result of this competition is. Just gave me peace, it gave me ease, and it let me enjoy the contest. If something went great, I was happy. If something didn't go great, I could still find joy because I'm at the Olympics competing with the best person, the best mentor, the, just one of the best people to be around. Um, so God's given us a cool opportunity, and I'm glad I could have come away with an Olympic silver medal in my first ever event. All right, congratulations to you both. Thank you very much. Jesus, and 
there's so many people that are just trying to think about good stuff, and it might work for a few minutes, a day or two, or a week, but they're going to get pulled back into the world, but this is not to be. You can't really think about the good things without having your glory in Jesus and knowing that when you do that, it's an act of good things. So Paul says, guys, it's a plan. Keep your mind in the mind. That's where the real power is. That's the one that. Then he says, I like to see things in this man, and the God of peace will be with you. Not just peace of God taking the power of God, but the God of heaven, the God of peace, he himself will be with you. So when we're not worried, and we're trusting God, and we're going to have that God's peace will protect us. But when we walk through this whole process, then God Himself will walk with us. If you know Jesus very well, you discern that there's times when you start to sense God's presence with you, but you sense that God is taking care of you in a way. You just need to sleep spot for all your living this year. And then there's times when you know that you think the more that this July you began, you ran into one of those two buckets. But when you live in this world, even in the middle of the difficulties and tragedies and all of that, when we do our minds right, then we respond to God and actually work and do something. They still let that vortex spin. They still allow that conflict to be there. They still allow that garbage to say, well, because it's safe to do and it's Discipline me. But the difference is, it's still being there with you. God of all peace. The country, the human self will be with you. God's perfect in this place. The one and the other. Rejoice in the Lord of all peace. Don't be like Jesus. Pray about the Lord. Thank God for the power of God's name. Think about all of this truly noble. Not just possible, but really is true and very good. And don't be thinking about all that other stuff and taking and making power of things. But live in that world, the relationship with Christ, and God in heaven walk with you in this way. Thank you. Lord, I thank you for Jesus. Thank you that our identity is truly found in you. We could not have said any better than what they would say for the Lord. I want to know he is Lord of our life. Everything else is second place. Whatever goals we have in our life, whatever dreams, whatever relationships we have, everything else is second seat to you. Everything else comes in the past. And so God, I pray that you have a better place than things in my own. So I possibly feel in this world for the first time. I pray you help them to understand that the first steps forward and having their hope in the only thing that is untouchable that's you. Nothing can take it away, nothing will hurt it, nothing will come up. Because we have a relationship with you by faith in Jesus. And God, for the rest of us in our midst, together we recognize that we pray to fix so often. We know these truths so well. We know that Jesus is on the power. But somewhere along the way, we begin to look at other things. And we have to look at something we have to store in the mall or on the line. We begin to see something else that catches our attention. And we suddenly put our hearts there. And that's simply on me. Times it's our kids. Times it's our relationships. It's our possessions. It's our life. God, you are a jealous love of God. You will not allow these things to stay in this place. So you allow them to be touched and you begin to fall in the fairness. And we come to believe in that things. God, I pray that you would simply help us to realize that those things fall in the heart. Is it the way we Bringing us back to what's most important in our relationship with you. How we trust you and 
very clear in all of our thoughts today, the same way that I was on the line. 